Christ is born today. So hello everybody, welcome to Wednesday of the fourth week of Easter, and also today is the Feast of Saints Philip and James. Now we're going to talk about Philip a lot uh, in here, and I got a little video I want to share with you about James, James the Lesser, which I, I think in the Chosen is called James, uh, Little J, they call him Little James, I think that's the one, well, I don't know, I'm thinking that's the, who it is they're, they're talking about here, the first bishop of Jerusalem actually. And uh, uh, Jesus appeared to him at a certain point. But anyway, we'll talk about that in just a few moments. Let's begin through the intercession of Philip and James, two apostles, both were martyred. Let's ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes you don't heal us. Christ, have mercy. You always forgive our sins, always drag us closer to you. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us each year with the feast day of the apostles Philip and James, grant us through their prayers a share in the passion and resurrection of your only begotten Son, so that we may merit to behold you for all eternity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I am reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preach to you, which you indeed received and in which you also stand. Through it, you are also being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, for I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ has died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at once, most of whom are still living though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to the one born abnormally, he appeared to me, the word of the Lord. The heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare Heavens declare the glory of God, 
in the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word today, and night to night imparts knowledge. discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you knew me, you would know my Father. From now on, you know him because you've seen me. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus said to him, Have you been with me for so long a time? And you still do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me sees the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The word that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me, and I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. And will do even greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will give. I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of that is this Sunday's Gospel too, surprisingly. But here we go. Um, Feast of Two Disciples, we got Philip, the fisherman, uh, and who we're going to hear a lot about in the gospel here today, James. Now, this is called James the Less, or uh, I'm going to think in the chosen, um, little James, cousin, which we would call brother, a cousin of Jesus, first bishop of Jerusalem, both of them are martyred. We're not going to hear too much from James, but I. this is one of my absolute favorite scenes from the chosen I, I, I mean, I, I, first time I saw this, I had tears on the side of my face. This is so beautiful. Listen to this dialogue between James and Jesus. Master. Little James. May I have a moment? Of course. I am. Um, forgive me, I'm uh, not always confident to speak. Slow to speak. It's a very good quality. <clears throat> I wanted to ask you a question. Please? So you are sending us out with the ability to heal the sick and lame. Yes, that, that is what you said. Yes. So you're telling me that I have the ability to heal. <laughs> Forgive me, I just... I find that difficult to imagine with my condition, which you haven't healed. Do you want to be healed? Yes, 
Of course, if, if that's possible. I think you've seen enough to know it's possible. Why haven't you? Because I trust you. What? Little James. Precious little James. I need you to listen to me very carefully. Because what I'm going to say defines your whole life to this point and will define the rest of your life. Do you understand? In the Father's will, I could heal you right now. And you'd have a good story to tell, yes? Yes, that you do miracles. And that's a good story. But there are already dozens who can tell that story. And there will be hundreds more, even thousands. But think of the story that you have, especially in this journey to come, if I don't heal you. To know how to proclaim that you still praise God in spite of this. To know how to focus on all that matters so much more than the body. To show people that you can be patient with your suffering here on earth because you know you'll spend eternity with no suffering. Not everyone can understand that. How many people do you think the Father and I trust this with? Hmm? Not many. But the others, they're so much more. So much more what? I don't know. Stronger? Better at this? James, I love you. But I don't want to hear that ever again. I know how easy it is to say the Song of David. That I fearfully and wonderfully made. But it doesn't make this any easier. And in this group, it doesn't make me feel like any less of a burden. A burden? First of all, it is far easier to deal with your slow walking than it is to deal with Simon's temper. <laughs> Trust me. Are you fast? Do you look impressive when you walk? Maybe not. But these are things the Father doesn't care about. You are going to do more for me than most people ever dream. So many people need healing in order to believe in me. Or they need healing because their hearts are so sick. That doesn't apply to you. And many are healed or not healed because the Father in Heaven has a plan for them which may be a mystery. And we remember what Job said. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you pass from this earth and you meet your Father in heaven where Isaiah promises you will leap like a deer, your reward will be great. So hold on a little longer. And when you discover yourself finding true strength because of your weakness, and when you do great things in my name, in spite of this, the impact will last for generations. Do you understand? Yes. Thank you, Master. So, little touch of James there, but special gospel that includes Philip for us here. While the disciples were with Jesus for quite some time, they 
They seem to always have a lot to learn. They had a hard time breaking free of their preconceived notions that we keep talking about all the time, how their preconceived notions get shattered over and over and over again. Here in chapter six, we hear from Jay, from Philip, um, when faced with a hungry crowd, he's worried how much it's going to cost to feed everybody. In today's gospel, he still doesn't see Jesus uh, as the face of the Father. I mean, would you? Would I? I mean, this is so amazing. Now, now, Jesus is saying something really important for us here, that he is the face of the Father. Now, I, I wouldn't have got it. I mean, would Jay, I, I'd have been with Philip. I've right, been right beside him. You know, when that was it, wow, wow. You know, really? So that's something that, you know, you got to think about for the rest of your life. Who has seen me has seen the Father. But despite all their struggles, all their questions, all their difficulties, these disciples, Philip and James, as we hear, or as we see in the video, continue to follow Jesus. They knew there was something special there. They continue to learn. They continue to see more deeply. And Jesus says to them, whoever believes in me will do the works I do, and even greater than these. I wonder if we really believe that these days. Because I think he meant that, that you and I should be blowing the top off the world today by the various things. And I see people doing the most remarkable things. Lay folks doing things I could never do and do it so beautifully. And, and I could, it just we, we just multiplied more folks doing all that. Wonderful things will begin to happen. So Philip continues to believe. Uh, God builds on their faith as he's called to build on us for us. Here's the thing. You two have been called. You and I have both been called. And I pray you respond, that you allow the Lord Jesus to continue to build on your faith, like, like he does with Philip and like he does with James in that beautiful video that I just shared with all of you. And I am imagine that little James walked away from that man. He had to have been on top of the world, knowing that he was loved by Jesus in such a fashion. So the more we step out in faith, the more Jesus gives us faith, the more understanding we have, so that you and I continue the journey. Let's continue the process. Let's risk stepping out over and over again so we can continue to grow in our life of faith. After Easter and after Pentecost, Philip and James, they stepped out. And they stepped out over and over again. As Jesus continued to shatter their preconceived notions, they kept on stepping out and their faith grew over and over and over again. Let you and I not play it safe either. Let's keep stepping out and let's allow us continually, you to continually do greater and greater things. God bless you. Here's my question for today. What is one thing that God is calling you to step out in faith and do eh, that maybe you're a little bit afraid of right now? God bless you folks. Thank you for joining me for this. And uh, let's pray, continue our prayer today through the, through the intercession of Philip and James. Bye-bye now.